the Eurofighter. Yes, this one. This is the only aircraft whose story starts like a joke. There is a Briton, a German, an Italian and a Spaniard. They all say... May I have a word, sir? Sure, what is it? I completed the editorial plan of the series on the Eurofighter, sir. Oh, good. Uh, how many episodes? 37 episodes, sir. 37? Otis, we can't do 37 episodes on a single aircraft. Why, why so many? I had to include all the political discussions, the false starts, the program revisions, the diplomatic activity, the lack of funds, the broken okay, up development... Okay, okay. Uh, what if we leave all that stuff out and we just focus on the aircraft? One. One. A short one. Okay, there will be more than one, don't worry. The development of the Eurofighter has been tormented by all sorts of political disagreements and commercial rivalries, and they are not over. Because the aircraft is being developed as we speak, it's alive and kicking and still being produced. If I had chosen to go through all these events, you would have had a good excuse to fall into a deep catatonic state, but I won't. We will take the aircraft as it is, and we will try, as usual, to understand the hows and whys of the design and the employment. And the first question to answer is, why this aircraft even exists? But before that, a word from this video's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder, with more than 2,000 aircraft, tanks, helicopters and ships, is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. You can use all these assets to play dynamic combined arms, peer-to-peer -peer battles. I have a soft spot for War Thunder for sentimental reasons, but what I like the most is the level of game details. Vehicles are modeled down to individual components, and the result is a very interesting damage model showing the details of what is happening. The graphic is beautiful, it scales easily to 4K, the sound effects are great, and I love the music. Did you know that you can listen to the music on Spotify? There is a playlist for it. So it is very immersive and it strikes the right balance between details and playability. I am an aircraft guy and when I started playing War Thunder, Second World War aircraft were the centerpiece of the game, but the game has grown incredibly and now you have almost 100 years of history. Please go play War Thunder now on PC, Xbox or PlayStation. Please support the people who support me. It's free to play, you don't have an excuse anymore, and if you use the link in the description below, there is a large bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles and other implements to get started in the best possible way. Now, since the Eurofighter is not yet in the game, the next best thing is going back to the video. In the mid-70s, the development of the Tornado was well advanced, but in the UK and Germany, and possibly even France, there were other requirements. There were other aircraft that needed replacing. You see, the Tornado was a ground attack aircraft. Okay, the British and the Italians at some point will have the air defense variant, but it was never a top aircraft, so it doesn't really count, I suppose. The choice of prioritizing the attack role and the deep strike was made because in those years there was a concept emerging among the NATO planners. To contrast a Warsaw Pact offensive, they thought, the best solution was to strike deep into Eastern European territory to strangle the logistic choke points and degrade the Soviet reserves. In this way, the initial assault could overcome maybe the first line of defense, but it would have run quickly out of steam. If the reserves were let into the main effort, they would have ground down the numerically inferior NATO forces. This approach will evolve in the airland battle doctrine that will remain the official NATO doctrine well into the 90s. A full discussion about airland battle is beyond the scope of this uh, series of videos, but, but in that context it was clear that having air superiority would have made the deep strike much, much easier. At the time, air forces were not as finicky as they are today. Losses were accepted if the exchange was advantageous. 
and the aircraft were still numerous enough and cheap enough to support this approach. However, air superiority was recognized at the time as being a powerful force multiplier. So an air superiority fighter was on order, and not to speak for the defense of the NATO airspace from the Soviet attacks. So in Europe gradually emerged the idea that a new aircraft was needed, a multi-role one, but with a focus on air-to-air -air combat. In those years there have been several studies, concepts, proposals from the industry, and the governments issued several different requirements, but everything came together around 1982 when the three original Panavia partners launched the ACA program. I'm actually old enough to remember the announcement. And by the way, ACA was the acronym of Agile Combat Aircraft. However, the story of how this happened is exactly the complex web we want to steer clear of. And we want to steer clear from the history of the program itself till, uh, say, the first unit centering service, because it was well, a mess. There's no other word to describe it. Let's say that it was even difficult to find a common name. At some point, the aircraft was named FIFA, which was the acronym of Future European Fighter Aircraft. Some press releases came out with that acronym, which was changed in a hurry because FIFA in Italian is a colloquial way to say fear. And also the final name, Typhoon, was not an easy pick. So, my friend, I was thinking that we could name this new aircraft, this new marvel of technology, continuing the tradition of the tornado. We could call it Typhoon. My friend, you can't name it Typhoon? There was a British fighter in World War II with the same name? That's not polite? Oh, I understand. I'm terribly sorry. So maybe we could call it Spitfire 2. Typhoon is perfect! However, this gives you an idea of the level of concord, friendship and cooperation that happened during that program. So it seemed a miracle that a prototype successfully flew for the first time in 1994. A sigh of relief pervaded Europe. And I personally think that it is even more a miracle that the final result of this really tormented development is outstanding. What variant can safely be identified as a final result, sir? Yeah, notice is right, unfortunately. So do you think that the system of blocks and refreshes of the F-35 is confusing? Well, I think that they copied the system that we Europeans have on the Eurofighter and actually simplified it. The first production Eurofighters enter service in 2003 with all the four partners. These aircraft were Tranche 1, Batch 1, and according to the agency managing the program, they were austere. Basically austere meant that they had some air-to-air -air capabilities, uh, but they didn't have any air-to-ground capability. And after that, new trenches and batches will follow, but that's not the whole story. There have been updates, upgrades, national upgrades, uh, updates and upgrades that have not been shared among all the partners. And there were also export versions that, and all of that is basically a mess. So considering anything, all the aircraft built or the aircraft that are going to be built upon orders that have been already acquired, there will be soon 680 Eurofighter built. I wonder if there are two with the same configuration. However, despite all this complexity, the aircraft has evolved to a very capable platform that is having a reasonable export success, and it is considered a very dangerous opponent by everyone in the world. And the latest variants also have a credible air-to-ground capability that must not be discounted. 
So to answer the initial question, the aircraft was conceived to fill a capability gap that the four original partners all had in common, that is air-to-air -air combat, air superiority. But the aircraft going beyond that, with a sheer refusal to give up to politics, bureaucracy, financial hardship, and with the help of a pinch of good luck, it became the main platform for all these partners. However, we will go into the details in the following episode. This was just an introductory video because this series is going to keep us occupied for quite a long time in 2023. And now time to say thank you. Thank you very much to War Thunder for sponsoring this video and click on the link below. You will get a bunch of goodies that you can use in game to get started in the best way possible. And also an enormous thank you to all those who are supporting the channel by one of donations on PayPal, by being members or on Patreon. You can also support the channel by buying a model from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I have a small percentage and there is no extra cost for you. So so thank you very much for watching and see you next time.